pisses me off. Not because I'm soft. I'm not soft. Uh, but if you want to wrestle, let's wrestle. If you have a problem with me, you know, let's, let's, let's settle with it. You know, if you can't beat me on the mat, try to beat me in the parking lot. But if you can't beat me on my, the mat, I doubt you can do much to me in the parking lot either. The previous administration took all the guys. Wink, wink. I just want some ice cream, man. I just want some ice cream. Welcome back to the Shots Fired Podcast, folks. All the way up to episode nine now. Um, and this podcast is, it's the horrible take given, PD3 backing, Alton Twin clowning, bar closing, world podcasting champions of the world. Woo! And just like uh, Ric Flair, this podcast, you know, over promises and under delivers as Ric Flair didn't show up for Beat the Streets. He absolutely did not. No, he was not there. <laughs> they gave a very touching tribute to him, though. That's, how do you not? He just doesn't show up. Just I, no excuse, nothing. I talked to a lot of people, that never, and it never did come up, so I don't have any inside information as to why he wasn't there. But it was weird because they had been selling this idea, like we got Ric Flair, he's going to be a hype man. And then all of a sudden it was just same old Robbie Smith and Jake Herbert, just like always. <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. Um, and again, are we sure he didn't die? Is he okay? Uh, we do not know that he did not die. No. All right, we'll have to look into that. At um, some point we'll, we'll fact check and see if Ric Flair is still alive. <laughs> that probably would have been a good thing to do coming into the night, but oh well. It leaves us some suspense for next week's episode. We uh we actually got a couple views last week. Our our head t- our uh, headline grab really got everyone, I guess. They all got sucked in by the Tom Brands. I I feel like our podcast is kind of like the scene from uh, Major Leagues where halfway through the season the team's not too bad and they keep cutting to different groups of people. Like these guys aren't too bad. These guys aren't too bad. And then at the very end, the groundskeepers look at each other and they're like. They're still shitty. Yeah, they're shitty again. Yeah, so <laughs> I think that sums up our podcast perfectly. I think so. But all right, got some got some stuff to get to tonight. Had quite a bit of wrestling going on with Beat the Streets and World Team Trials, and you happened to attend both of them. It sounds like you have a very eventful uh, Beat the Streets. Yeah, that weekend. was that was pretty incredible. Um, man, I was I was. Out of my element, living living a life that I've, I've never never lived before, for sure. Um, but it was pretty cool just to see, you know, that that wrestling up close and the whole the, the, for a little while there, New York was kind of kicking our butt. Uh, my wife left her wallet on the plane when we landed. We had a, like a four hour delay out of Minneapolis Tuesday night, so obviously you're gonna drink. In the four-hour delay, and then of course um, on the plane, you're not gonna not have a couple more. And so somewhere along the lines, um, she left her wallet on their place. So we had to cancel all her cards as soon as we got there. Woke up Wednesday morning and realized it. So then now I'm the only one with any methods of payment for us. And on Wednesday night, I left my phone in an Uber. So waking up Thursday morning, I'm without my phone, and she's without any form of payment. So we were, we were, New York was getting the best of us for a little while there. But, uh, man, beat the streets made up for it, that's for sure. Uh, it was, can, go ahead. I can just imagine how that was going. I bet you were so mad at her for losing her wallet, and then you lose your phone the next day, and then you just kind of had nothing to do. You're like, hey. I was pretty understanding over when she left, left, left her wallet on a plane. I said, oh, that's okay. We'll get everything figured out. Be fine. Unfortunately, she brought her passport because her, uh, her Delta miles or something are still in her, um, her old name. So she had to bring her passport with, and so at least she had some form of ID for, for everything else. But and New York's a pretty cool city, and that that uh, getting to see that wrestling down on that Pier 17 was really really impressive. So that's just like. Yeah, obviously, it's out on the pier, so you got water all around you, right? Yeah, and we were on the fourth. We we're on the roof of a four-story building, so it was okay. elevated. And actually, to be honest, well, so we didn't buy our tickets. We got our tickets given to us, um, and we went to check in, 
and our tickets got declined. Oh, wow. Yes. And they're like, sorry, you know, did you not get our emails? And we're like, or they, they first said, when did you buy the tickets? And we're like, um, not really sure. And they said, well, anything, you know, bought after May 11th, we had to refund the money because we had to put an, an HVAC unit with an AC unit under the mat. And that took up, you know, that's a lot of weight. So we can't have quite as many people up there. So we refunded <laughs> your money. They're like, didn't you get the emails we sent? And we're like, well, we didn't buy our tickets, so we didn't really get any emails. <laughs> and they're like, oh, man, I'm sorry. That's That sucks. Um, you know, you guys can – there's a bar down the street streaming it. You can go watch it there. They offered me a Flow account for the night. I was like, I already have a Flow account. It doesn't really – you know, we were – so she's without her wallet. I lost my phone, and now we can't actually go in to beat the streets. So we were really kind of down there. Um, and then she called her friend um, who was kind of – taking care of us while we were out there. And, um, all of a sudden, three minutes later, the guy comes up to us, the same guy that told me I, I couldn't come in, came up to me. He's like, are you Mac? And I was like, yeah. He's like, wow, sorry. There was a, there was a mix up. Your, your tickets are good. <laughs> so I, I do not know what happened in that three minutes, but all of a sudden our tickets became good and we got to go in and it was absolutely amazing. Um, I commend you for not giving them the, do you know who I am? No, I'm not gonna do because do you realize who else was there? <laughs> I could say, do you know who I am? And they'd be like, yeah, I, I do, but you know who else is here? <laughs> uh, You're a D list celebrity tonight. At best, a D list celebrity. It was, it was absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, there was, you know, we're the VIP section, so it was all you can drink. Um, I took full advantage of that. Oh, wow. Uh, it was in, we were right up by the mat. And it was just really cool seeing all the people there. Um, Kinkishvili and Petrishvili were there that, so Kinkishvili's, um, uh, he went worlds yeah. two years ago. Uh, no, nah, I couldn't tell you exactly. I know he's a medalist. I believe he did. And then Petrishvili was the German or the Georgian who won last heavyweight. year. Yeah. Heavyweight last yeah. year. So they're there. Yeah, it looks like I'm looking at the results. Kings really got third last year. Uh, but they were they, – they, them and like four other Georgians were there, and they were just smashing beers. They had a stack of cups that was like three feet tall between them. And the, like the, the wrestling opened at 2 o'clock, but like the actual – you know, the big matches didn't start till around 6. I think those guys got there at like 2 just so they could get as much time – <laughs> on the the free beers as they could get, it was incredible. The like, Kingish really was hammered. But, I mean, he had this terrible, terrible neck on too. So I was getting a <laughs> kick out of that. But, I mean, it's just everybody that's anybody was there, and it was it was pretty fun to kind of see that. And the wrestling was incredible. I know we obviously got to talk about the mat. The mat was mat was trash. Um, I think like, that's all there is to say. I mean, it it sucked. I went up to it and I felt it after the duel. And it was just, it was super slick. And it wasn't because it was wet. It was just, at, in, in, even though it was dry, it was slick. Um, them trying to put the, wipe it down with the towels and stuff during the match, it did, that wasn't, there was not going to fix it. Um, so, obviously I wasn't there. I mean, yep. you said you touched it. But, I mean, this is kind of right up my horticultural alley here. Yep. But, uh, to me, that was just the do. I, I don't think it mattered what mat it was. It would have been, any mat would have been uh, slick. They, um, so the print that they, they printed that, that logo on it and that uh -huh. to me, that looked like that. Cause it had these tiny little bumps on it and they were just, uh, just ridiculously slick. Uh, like after the duel, there's this little girl, like everybody went up on the mat and there's people walking around. There's this little like four year old girl, girl walking and all of a sudden she just slips her feet, went straight out from underneath <laughs> her. Like, like she was on ice. I mean, it was, it was terrible. And I really don't a, think that Chris Berman, whoop. Right. There was, there was, I don't think there was anything, there was nothing they could have done. I just think the mat sucked. I don't, maybe I'm wrong, I, but just kind of my, my opinion on it was, and I don't think it, maybe it's not Resolite's fault. It's just that the, the, the paint job that they, to make the custom mat just didn't work. I'm, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Cause I wasn't there. I don't know, but I would, I would be willing to bet it was just from the humidity yeah, and I was I mean, also it, it saying, was too, you know, they had they had it in uh, 
Times Square the last how many years, right? Right. Um, when you have all that concrete and asphalt around you, that's going to hold heat a lot longer. So the humidity is not going to cause the mat to be wet as quick. So Yeah. I wonder if that – I mean they had that AC unit underneath there. I'm sure they had that thing just rolling at full – as hard as they – as high as they could go. But yeah, I mean that's – that definitely was not helping, I'm sure. No. And... So, but yeah, I, I, I just remember – Piles was talking about it, about the map being crappy, and I was like, I think that's just the humidity, but I, I don't know. So I talked to Joe Russell afterwards, and he said that they sprayed tough skin on the bottom of Burroughs' shoes before he went out there, mm-hmm. hoping that might help a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so when he steps on the mat, he, like, steps on this little towel that's laying down, and the towel, like, sticks to his shoes. <laughs> but it did nothing at all for him for his traction like the, when it got to the actual mat the tuscan didn't do anything yeah, oh, yeah it was it sucked it, i mean but then, i mean you kind of think about it you know you got you wrestle a lot of practices where that's kind of the right. conditions so right it's Russell not was, like it was totally foreign to some of those guys but yeah it wasn't ideal you don't want those type of matches being decided on that those conditions right. russell was super nervous too because he had the idea of doing the tough skin. Um, and he did it, and then he got a text after it was over from Bill Zadok, who's his boss. It was like, do not put that on Jordan's shoes. Absolutely do not do it, Joe. And he was like, <laughs> after, he was like, oh, it's too late. <laughs> he didn't say anything, but he's like super <laughs> nervous that Burroughs was going to lose and he was going to get fired. And if you know Joe <laughs> Russell at all, he's always like just worst case scenario kind of guy. So I'm sure he was so nervous during that match. <laughs> So, yeah. any the any actual other wrestling fun was stories from there. Or? Um, the actual wrestling was pretty pretty incredible. I think you know, obviously there's a couple matches that were a little more boring, um, but some of the big ones. I mean, obviously Burroughs Chimizo delivered that you know that second takedown Chimizo got, where he kind of sat the corner, and in, in, in re single legged Burroughs was amazing. I, mm-hmm. I don't understand how you can do that or how you know to do that, but that guy's defense is, is really good. We got the patented Jordan Burroughs double, you know, that everybody wanted to see. Unfortunately, that wasn't even the best double of the night. Dake, Dake's double was, to end his match, was the best, I think. Dake took the cake on that one, huh? Yeah. Kyle Snyder got absolutely spiked off the mat hard. <laughs> I rewatched that one like six times today. He got, I mean, the camera shakes because he, he got spiked so hard. <laughs> like, oh, it was incredible. So the match between Burroughs and Chimizo, yep. how do you think it goes next time? Who does it favor having seen each other like that? Um, It'll be interesting. So I don't know. Uh, Chimizo is still trying to, to grow into the weight, obviously. There were some... Uh, some issues with weigh-ins. Um, Chimizo said he wasn't going to come unless they changed it to day of weigh-ins. Burroughs, was, their camp was like, no, we didn't. That's not what we agreed on. It's supposed to be day before. Everybody always knew it was day before. And then they, I think they threatened to not come. So then they changed it like, all right, fine, we'll do day of. So those two are, those two are the only two that weighed in day of. And then after, so Burroughs weighs in, he starts walking off and he gets a little bit of ways. And Chimizo's camp's like, hey, that doesn't count. They're like, what do you mean it doesn't count? They're like, we didn't see it. They're like, you were standing right here. How did you not see it? And they're just so they're just getting, they made him weigh in again, and it didn't matter because he was he was under before. But like uh-huh. they just kept messing with him like that a little bit, kind of change things up on him. I think that pissed off Burrell's pretty good. Um, I don't know, but I, I think I I think it's an even match. Next time again, I I wouldn't favor one guy over the other. I mean, towards the end, it kind of looked like uh, Chimizo ran out of gas a little bit, right. which you know you kind of see with them foreigners. Like we said, they don't necessarily peak for some of these events quite as much. So I don't know. I think I think it's a toss up next time, and I'm I'd be real nervous if I see my you know our guy Burroughs up yeah. against Chimizo. I, so I on Thursday night, I actually got fortunate. And I got to hang out with Frank for uh, about four hours or so. And we kind of asked him about the match. 
And he said the big thing he kind of took away, which is weird, I've never heard this about Burroughs before, was that he, he what he noticed was that his grip was extremely strong. That he, really? you know, when he got a hold of, of Frank's forearms that he, like, couldn't get him free. So that that's kind of weird. Like, you always think he's he's just super strong, you know, or uh-huh. and you think he's so quick, and, and that's his advantage. But it seems like maybe more so, you know, or at least to Chimizo, it was the grip that was the most impressive thing. I don't think you ever really, or I don't think I've ever really heard anyone say that, that that's something, you know, they, they talk about Burroughs uh, being one of his strengths. But mm-hmm. something I thought was kind of interesting was I was watching, they did the they had the video of the weigh-ins, and you had Chimizo weigh-in, you're like, oh, man, this guy is a, a specimen right here, especially yeah. standing next to that, that pud, Jamie Gray. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you pan to, to Burroughs, and you're like, oh, my God, he <laughs> dwarfs him just just not even bigger just he's just so cut there's just there can't be any fat on him no it's really cool like if you go back and watch Burroughs from like when he began his run in 2010 or whatever it was 11 um how much smaller he was then than what he is now I mean it's it's absolutely amazing how much different he looks that guy's nuts. Yeah, especially his, his his lats are the thing that always stick out to me. Like he is like an upside down triangle. Yeah. And mm-hmm. James Green's kind of Reverse the same way too. Scene. So obviously it's what they're what they're training. But yeah, but, so that's what I took away from that one. Yeah, my my impression beat the streets was incredible. I'd love to get to go back next year if I can. Um, had a had an awesome time for sure. We got to see the city a little bit and have some fun and. Watch some great wrestling. Nothing more on your your four hours with Chimizo? Uh, the, he had a couple Corona lights. Um, he doesn't speak very good English, but he, I uh-huh. did infer that he called me fat at one point. Or <laughs> at least inferred that I'm just really big. Um, I caught him taking a picture of me on his phone. <laughs> and I was like, did you just take a picture of me? And he kind of starts laughing. He's like, you're, you're like... And he like flexed, but he like didn't really like make it look like it meant muscular wise. Um, so we were dying laughing. So I I took a picture of him holding his phone up uh, of the picture where he was making fun of me on. So even though he doesn't speak good English, he I guess that's a universal language. Well, I think we just got our episode titled "Frank Chimizo <laughs> Calls Mac Fat." Yeah, accurately <laughs> describes Mac. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Oh man, that'd be so cool being around those guys. Well, that's that's what I love about going to NCAs and being down the floors. Yeah, these are like the best in the world, and you're just walking around with them. And yeah, I mean, the coolest thing. I mean, there was just six of us there. So at this, we were just this tiny little hole in the wall Mexican joint that had outstanding food and good drinks, yeah. and we just hung out there for a while and talked. It was it was pretty fun. That's pretty cool. All right, on to. You want to go on to some of the other matches, I guess, the other other super match, or you want to talk about Snyder? Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, go ahead. We, you're, where are you at in the Snyder deal? I think if that match happens overseas, Snyder loses, because I think they they would award two um, on that challenge. Or wait, what was it? I can't remember which way it went, but I think I think that gets called two. That Snyder exposes early. Yeah. And then Cuba doesn't give up a challenge point, so that's three point swing right there. And then that's the match. Um, that I mean, was, he would have attacked. He would attack then after the four point because he was down eight one after the four was point. Was it a ten? Yeah. Well, he, he, regardless, he still would have lost. But yeah. So that, that that was the thing I took away from it. it was like, wow, I, it was Schneider just not ready? I mean, I know Salas Perez is way good, but I was not expecting that at all. I I thought t- Snyder was going to attack him. <laughs> That's what I predicted before the before the match. So I looked really bad, especially when he was down seven or eight one. But um, yeah, I mean, it just seemed like he he. If you look at the one spot where he ends up giving up that big four pointer, he tries to sidestep him and go behind, and he just misses it. And I think on a maybe on a different mat, he's got a little better traction, and maybe he gets that angle. And yeah. catches the corner and is able to get a takedown instead of getting dropped. But uh, 
yeah, obviously there's you wrestle any match and you can always say, well, if we would have done this and you know, both guys were wrestling under the same circumstances. Yeah. Um, and so I don't, I don't think I would favor, I definitely wouldn't favor Salas Perez in a, in a rematch. I would take Kyle Snyder every time. So doesn't really I, change a lot for me. I wouldn't. I, I, yeah, I definitely wouldn't favor him next time. I, it's, it's almost probably a good thing for Snyder. Like, okay, Hey, you know, we really need to focus back in here a little bit. Um, and I don't, I don't know, not that I think he thinks like that. I, he just, he thinks so much different in his interviews. It's so fun to listen to him talk about wrestling, but I mean, that was really all I had from that match. You have anything else? Kid's got a big heart, man. Uh-huh. You know, and that, it was, it was pretty cool. That for only being, there's, I don't even know if there was a thousand people there, but it got pretty loud when he came back. Um, I bet it was pretty quiet when he got spiked off the mat. Like he said, <laughs> it absolutely was. People were like, "What just happened?" <laughs> like it was. You can see me. I don't know if you can see me in the exact spot when he gets uh, spiked, but in that sequence right before, I'm in the background wearing a white Q-zip, uh, and I know I had my mouth open when he got slammed. <laughs> it was impressive. Oh man, I I was probably do the same thing so all right i also yeah, found out uh jake herbert cuts his hair one time a year really yes right after beat the streets and before the gala and then lets it grow out till next year's beat the streets what does he do with it i don't know i don't know if he donates it or something but like so he had that i mean obviously a huge mullet going and mm-hmm. then he came downstairs to the the gala afterwards and like was had a nice fade. And I was like, what happened to you? He's like, oh, I do it every year. I cut my hair one time a year right after the Beat the Streets. <laughs> just, he's, he's a strange dude, man. He's, he seems like he'd be fun to follow around for a night. He's all over the place. Um, he was pitching this life coach thing he's got going on right now. But, yeah, it, it was funny just watching him interact with, with people. And that, that gala was pretty cool, too. I mean, it's just, like I said, it, it more of the same. Just everybody who's everybody that's there. Got to talk to quite a few college coaches, Mark Manning, Joe Dubuque, uh, Zach Tonelli. Uh, let's see, I don't know. I can't remember if anyone else. There's a couple other ones there. Um, Bryce Meredith looked outstanding. <laughs> he was dressed really well. Yanni was there at the gala. Um, that was, I he was going to wrestle. Well, World he, team trials. Did I think he because he tore his ACL? Didn't he have surgery on it? Yeah, but I thought there was talk in there about nah, him coming back. I guess is what I'm trying to say somewhere. I would be but shocked yeah, if he did that. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so both Meredith and Yanni were there. That was interesting. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was it was fun. I can't say it enough. I mean, that was it was a really cool weekend. We had uh, had a 6 a.m. flight Saturday night, and I. Got to bed roughly around 2.30 and had an alarm at 3.45 to get up to go to the airport. Why? Why even go to bed at that point? I don't know. It was a terrible idea. But we had, uh, I mean, got to the airport in time, fell asleep on the flight, woke up, landed in Minneapolis, jumped in my car and drove to Rochester right away and started coaching all day. Sounds terrible. Yes, it was. <laughs> we had... We had 98 kids competing on Saturday down there, so. I bet your guys had a lot better record the second day than the first day, by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wasn't a ton of help, let's just say that. We had six different coaches, I think, and it was just match after match after match. And couldn't hardly catch a break, but it was pretty cool. There, I mean, a lot of Iowa kids up there. Seabolt brought a bunch of their guys up there. They did really well, and. Uh, I saw Pablo up there with quite a few guys. So, Northern Plains yeah. is a good tournament. It's always a good tournament. Uh, you you went a couple years in there. We took a couple people up, I believe. Yep. We always, because I never once went to Junior State. Um, I always qualified for Fargo through uh, Northern Plains. What I always thought was funny is when when the whole Bosco crew went up there, like the second we walked in that building, we were headlocking people. Like we were headlocking like the ticket takers and the tournament officials, just anybody. 
there was headlocks flying everywhere. There weren't actually any technical wrestling moves. It was just throwing people, hoping to pin them. Yeah. Because you were going to gas late. <laughs> you didn't need that match to go the full six minutes or whatever it was. Then. It was very effective, though. Um, did you ever hear that? You might have been there. The story of, I believe it was Andy Frost. He, he had locked like five guys in a row to make the finals. And then he was kind of watching the guy he had. And he it was this, this goofy looking guy. He had this afro. And he walked around with a boombox. Yeah, I know who that guy is. Matches. And he walks out, you know, shakes hands with him. I think he tries to headlock him, just gets launched and teched immediately. And it ended up being Ben Askren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I was, I'm pretty sure I was there for that one. That was uh, pretty funny. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Especially back in the day where you don't have track wrestling or anything. You're just like, who is this guy? I'm going to tech him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so the Northern Plains went coincided with the World Team Trials. And I was mm-hmm. I didn't get to watch as much of that as I would like because it was in the other gym. But it sounds like there was some you know a couple good matches on the senior side to get before the finals. But for the most part, everything kind of went as planned. I would say. Yeah, we were talking a little bit before, and it, I mean, it mostly went chalk. There was really nothing. Um, you know the. Garrett Gross had a pretty good match again before the finals, but other than that, it, I guess Steve had a close one. But to me, it was the juniors were almost the better one. The, yeah, the better matchups. Yeah, that, that let, UWW Junior tournament's gotten so deep. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's incredible how talented that tournament's gotten. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, like we said, there really wasn't anything too crazy. I think the biggest thing I took away was uh, the Heat Valencia over Daringer. Yes. That was probably the biggest shocker, I would say. I would agree. I, I was... I can't believe he dominated him like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that does that change your opinion on is Date going to be the guy this year? Okay. So I was thinking about this. Um, and maybe we don't need to get into this quite yet and save this for the week before that way it's competed in final X, but no, we can't. I got a little bit to say. I was, I think now probably the new sexy pick is going to be Valencia over Dake. And I would not bet a lot of money either way, but I'm still, I'm still sticking with Dake. I don't think this, he sees his shot here and you know, this is, this is going to be the year for him. You know I mean? Really like look back at who he's lost to. He lost to Jordan Burroughs, the, the greatest of all time. And then he lost to what Jaden Cox that one year for Olympic trials, and yeah. that's I mean that's given up probably. He was very undersized. I mean, ten fifteen pounds easily. So, I I just don't see him being denied here. Yeah, I just, I could get on board with that. I I think that so he shoots those long shots and takes so good from that chest lock position that. He could definitely turn some of them into his own points. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, I assume he's going 79 again next year, or do you think he's going to try to move to an Olympic weight? I would guess he moves to an Olympic weight starting next year. You think so? Yeah, I mean, he's big, and so he'll go up against Taylor. Really? I uh, I was kind of – I was listening to a Dan Dennis interview – this last week, and I just was thinking it was kind of funny how we talk about... Did he mention the, me? Did he mention what? Me. No, this was... I think oh. it was a little bit older. I, we'll, we'll get into this in a little bit. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, anyways, I thought it was just funny that we always talk about how guys maybe sit out this year because it's full speed once college season hits us next year to try to make a team, get a medal, and then you sit in the finals. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have a guy like Dan Dennis who comes out of the woods and he's like Andre Dawson in that I don't I can't remember what commercial it's for. He comes out of the IV and he goes, What year is it? That's what Dan Dennis did. Yeah. And it just makes an Olympic team out of nowhere. <laughs> so we, we make a big emphasis on you gotta be in the cycle, you know, prepare, and then all of a sudden Dan Dennis comes out of nowhere, Olympic team. Yeah, I mean that that certainly happens and there's no reason why it couldn't again. It's doesn't you just gotta be hot at the right time. I mean Look at 
Frank Molinero. I mean, he was he was our Olympian. He was a fifth in the in the Olympic Games, and now he's third on the fourth on the ladder, third in the ladder. Uh-huh. And you know, it's it's just kind of interesting how quickly it can kind of slide. So is there is there a story with you and Dan Dennis there? You may sound like oh, there's a lot together. of stories with me and Dan Dennis, but I don't think he particularly cares for me all that much. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, no. Dan doesn't went, like me. Went that way, huh? Yeah. No. For sure. <laughs> Does that have anything to do with the, the Jason Ness stuff, by chance? Uh, no. I'm sure that didn't help it, but I had nothing to do with that, obviously. Uh, oh. I just don't think he particularly cares for me. Long <laughs> stories. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, the other thing is, I mean, just kind of... What'd you think of Gable beating, you know, crushing Hall again, and then this time beating Bradley and running close with Tony Nelson in the finals? I think I got to give it to him and say that I was wrong, that he shouldn't have been wrestling, because I think he definitely gained something out of this tournament. Um, But then you have him with Nelson in the finals. and I give Tony Nelson a lot of credit, dude's national champ, but... I'm I'm out on watching Tony Nelson matches. I'm gonna say I think the um, entire state of Iowa has <laughs> gladly or has happily watched their last Tony Nelson match. I know that almost the entire state of Iowa cannot absolutely cannot stand Tony Nelson. Um, it's it's nothing personal. I just man, yeah. it is so, you know you're in for a boring match when he's wrestling. I was I mean that double he took Gable down with and granted that was pretty much the only offense, but. I was like, what? You've got this? Where's this <laughs> Um That was, I mean, that was impressive. But I think he kind of, the rest of the way, kind of took it a, a little slower from then on. So I learned this new move in practice yesterday. They call it a double leg. I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> I was, you know, to be honest, I actually kind of was surprised that, that he beat Gable. From what I sure. kind of heard, Gable was getting a little bit of the better of him in practice, so that might be the last time that uh, he's able to beat him. I think we, I think it was the flow guys that brought it up, but he knew there was something there when Gable got the higher seat over Nelson for U.S. Open, and there was really no there was a pre seat, and there was really no blowback. You're like, oh, okay, apparently yeah. these guys wrestle quite a bit, and then it changed. So yeah. Um, I actually Tony beating Varner was really kind of surprising to me too. I didn't watch the match, so I didn't see it, but you know that one I didn't see coming. It. Oh, I gotta be really careful when I say this, but okay, Varner, Olympic champion, the guy's really good, but I I feel like I've seen him wrestle tournaments where he just I wouldn't say he's uninspired, but I just feel like he could be so much better. And he's just kind of going through the motion sometime. And that was almost kind of that match. But, I mean, the guy's given up probably a ton of weight, isn't he? Yeah, so he had to have been. That's part of it. He knows a guy against Nelson, he's really got to pick his spots. He can't just be wide open. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I don't really know where. You know, Varner's, he's older. He's done it. Do you think he keeps going for two more years? <sighs> Right off the bat, I would say I absolutely have no idea, but I wouldn't think so. I mean, two years is a long ways away. How, is he's he's like just a year or two younger than me? I think he's got to be almost thirty, doesn't he? Yeah, because he was in college when I was in college. Oh, really? So, yeah, I would say he's at least thirty. So he's definitely thirty. Man, that's uh, he's a year old. the same age as Burroughs, probably. I think Burroughs is twenty nine. <laughs> He might even be older than Burroughs the way you're yeah. talking. Yeah, so he might be a little bit older than Burroughs. But I mean, you got you got a Wisdowski in there. You'll have a Coon who's fully invested in freestyle, and you'll have Gable who's going to be hitting a stride about then. I, right. I mean, that's is that if you're that good, does that does that come into your mind when you're thinking about that stuff, or are you just like, nope, I'm a Olympic I, champ? I, I would be shocked that. if that came into his mind. I would think he. He considers it, you know, like if I train the right way, I can make this team. I don't care if there's who's there. I can make the team. Mm-hmm. 
because there's almost some of that with, I think we were talking today on our group chat, Fry Russell, with Ramos, you know, he's, he's pretty much fourth on the ladder right now, right? Third. You, well, on the wrestle off with Sanders. Well, okay, but I mean, Spencer Lee's probably above him is what okay. we're saying. Okay. And those guys are all very young and you're not getting any younger. You know, does he, is he giving it a go for the Olympics? I would be shocked if he does just because he's cutting so much weight, I think. That would be interesting. You know, I was kind of thinking about this. Now he has to wrestle with wrestle off against Sanders to make the national team at Final X. So he's going to have to make scratch again. And I don't think he really likes making 57 scratch. Can we talk about how weird – I guess I didn't realize that was part of Final X, that they have at the weights where there weren't – you know, medalists, they, they make them go all the way to final X for us for true third. Yeah, Is I it, mean, you know, like I said, when we, when we were talking about it, I mean, look, take the Sanders-Ramos situation. So Ramos loses twice to fix. Now all of a sudden he's got to wrestle that day against Sanders, who hasn't wrestled yet that day. So he comes off two losses and has to wrestle off to make the national team. I don't really I mean that's not really fair. And that's kind of what they're trying to avoid by – Final X to begin with, that the guy that goes through the mini tournament gets a break before he has to wrestle off for the spot. So I think it makes sense. And, you know, I actually, I like it because some of them Final X sites here are only going to have like six freestyle matches and six women's matches, and all of a sudden it's done. Like it's going to be quick. Yeah. So maybe a couple more filler matches in there is, isn't the worst thing. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, you're, you're definitely not wrong, but I guess I just think of it as these guys are right here in Rochester. Yeah. <laughs> and now all of a sudden you're going to make them train for, I mean, well, I mean you know, you're going to train because you're on the national team, but <clears throat> you got to fly yeah. all the way to Nebraska or Pennsylvania. It just seems like lo- logistically, like it yeah. could be done a little easier, I guess. But obviously the other end, like you said, is definitely. It's just wouldn't, I don't think it'd be fair to the guy that's coming off a loss at all. No, probably not. So, but yeah, I don't know if there's a better way to do that where you don't wrestle those third place matches until Saturday. So then maybe those guys have had some matches in two to make that a little. I don't know. Yeah, I think there's something to at least for those guys to think about there. But like you said too, it might be you know, hey, let's get some more matches at Final X actually. Hey, we, we haven't even talked about this. Our our boy, he's in Final X, not the actual Final X. The what would you call the true third place at Final X? Um, final. What would it be Triple X? Because it's final out tri- Triple X. There we yeah. go. There we go. So, <laughs> it's Triple X. Ooh, that sounds a little dangerous, but okay. <laughs> but I, you I know guess. what? I think it's fitting for our guy. So who's he got? I don't even know. Oh God. Um but yeah. I'm looking it up now. He should have Perry, right? Richard no. Perry. Yeah, should yeah. have Perry. Yeah, he did. six. Because he lost to yeah. Rita, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I, it, I like that. We can beat him. <laughs> yeah, we got this. His hair is looking good, man. His hair yeah, he had that little I don't know if I, it was a rubber band or what in there, but I did notice this. He was carrying around an Iowa State uh, backpack. Okay. Which was right. shocking to me considering his um, very public opinion of the uh, Iowa State University wrestling team. <laughs> I don't know what to think of that guy anymore, man. He he just doesn't care. I like – who is? do you know who that guy that tweeted us the one night that he was out? Yeah, Cody Arnold. You know him? Yeah, he's a Minnesota supporter. I uh, I thought it was funny that he's like, "Where you got? Where are you at?" And I'm like, "I've been in bed for like four hours, dude." <laughs> yeah, I didn't make it out to the bars. I was we just kind of stuck at the hotel, and we were all drinking there with some of our pinnacle parents and kind of just having a good time with them. It's kind of you know, this Northern Plains is one of the last tournaments of the year that we see most of them at. So, uh, that's why we kind of just hung around there. So I didn't get to the bars, but now after seeing some of the pictures, man, I wish I had. 
Yeah, you should have, man. It was it was quite the drinker schedule, I thought, on the weekend. You know, you didn't start till what, 10 o'clock? Yeah. Jason Bryant called me at like 2.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And his voice sounded great come Sunday morning. So he probably got in a full eight. Oh, man. Yeah, he needs to be somewhat responsible, I suppose, being the announcer guy. Yeah. Oh, well. I don't know. Nah, he did. I thought he did a good job. I thought... I, I mean, I thought the way it was set up, and granted, I, I know Rochester's not the best place to get to, for sure. Um, but as far as the way it was set up with what they had, I thought they did a great job. The city did pretty good. I mean, it was a pretty cool event. Yeah, I should have went up. Oh, we didn't say that you let our boy Pat Downey down in his first match. You, you weren't there on time, so yeah, that one is Reese, Reese Humphrey and Royce Alger had to take his corner. I see, and this is. So I saw Royce was out at uh, Beat the Streets, too. Mm-hmm. And he was blasted. And <laughs> just being a real weirdo. Um, so I know that he probably didn't give the best advice to Pat during that match. <laughs> he probably was scouting out the bars. He's like, Pat, I got a good bar downtown for us after this match right yeah. here, man. I'm going to help you lose this match so we can get out of here. Not successful though. Yeah. How how funny is that though? You go from nobody in your corner at US Open, all of a sudden, what two three time world team member Reese Humphrey and then Royce Alger. Yeah, Reese is the he's the head of the New Jersey Regional Training Center. So I don't know if they're that out they train out of Princeton. So I don't know if he's trying to get him out there or or what's kind of the plan. You placed ahead of him, didn't you? You should you should have kicked him out. Reese. Oh man. Yeah. I used to love wrestling Reese because he'd always kind of come, try to come up a body with me, and I would win that every time. That's funny that you would win that, and then you like you look back now, and he like threw everybody. Yeah, I was so I wrestled Reese four times, and I was four and zero against him. I decisioned him, teched him, majored him, and pinned him. So <laughs> oh, got, wow. got all four of the possible outcomes on him. There you go. But he was younger than me too, so it wasn't really like I was wrestling a. a Upperclassman Reese. I was wrestling, I think, the freshman version of him. So that was before the whole slam on the Hoster guy with the crazy name, wasn't it? Rugarello. Lou? Yeah, there we go. Lou. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That no, because I think that was his sophomore year, maybe. So I think I wrestled Reese both our freshman and sophomore, or his freshman and sophomore years. Okay. But all right. Yeah, I liked wrestling Reese. It was fun. Yeah. I don't feel like that's somebody I would have loved wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, but that's the thing. Like, I couldn't wrestle the really fast guys. Like, Sean Bunch torched me. And there was never a chance I was going to win that match against Bunch. I think I was 0-4 or 0-5 against him in college. Yeah, I remember that. Like, those. I mean, he was so fast. Um, but, like, the super strong guys or the guys that try to cover up her body, I loved wrestling those guys. I didn't really like the tall, lanky ones because they'd always throw in legs, and that was never good for me. No, never fun. No. And bottom in general just sucks. Like, you should just outlaw being on bottom. Broke from bottom. Yeah. So. Um, Where are we, man? We, we touched on almost everything already, didn't we? Yeah. I think we got an awesome junior team going. Uh, I definitely think that's the team that could win another team title. I think there's it's pretty solid up and down the lineup, and then you know I think with the guys we have at Final X, I think we could put together an incredible senior team too if some of them guys win. Yeah, I was really bummed on Marinelli not making it, but I think that dude's pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, Lewis, and then that that guy from is it North? He's from Colorado. That Alvarez. I don't I don't know how you say his name. The one who lost to Demas, but it went three. Yeah. Man, who is that guy? Where did he come from? I don't know. I, I don't know much about that guy, but he he looked pretty good. Holy cow. Yeah, he looked real good. Brady Berge and O'Connor had an awesome series, too. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, yep. you know, Berge wins a couple close ones and then gets tacked in the middle match. <laughs> Our three upper weights absolutely destroy their guys. <laughs> Our three upper weights went double techs in the first period each time. Mm-hmm. So I think I think we're real solid there at the top. I wonder how much.
much money Gannon Grammel spent to get up to Rochester. Oh, he looked. He was like his shoulder brace on, and like when he walked on the mat, you're just like, oh man, this ain't gonna go well. Like, oh no. Uh, yeah, Gables. Oh, yeah. Gables is probably the best junior wrestler in the world right now. Yeah, that like that's not even really making fun of him that he got beat by Gable, but he no. didn't make it two minutes. He didn't score a point. Right. That's not a good weekend. Um Fix does not have any more junior eligibility left, does he? Uh yeah, he should. He's a freshman. True okay. freshman. Okay. This year he was supposed to because they were they were saying that he would he could have requested uh well I think he still can request uh if he loses Russell final off. X he can request a wrestle off. Yep. Okay. He's beating Gilman, isn't he? I think so. I would say in that. Even when Ramos barely beat him, I was like, I think I think this guy's gonna beat Ramos and Gilman. Yeah. He looked he looked really, really good. Him and Zahid were two that I was most impressed with this weekend. Mm-hmm. Agreed. There really wasn't much else. We oh we never I guess we never talked about as Garoff and Oliver that's kind of jumping around if you want if you had anything to say on that I don't know that match was kind of weird I think maybe we had some um, helpful officiating a little bit there I, did, I thought it was crazy how sorry cut you off. No, I thought no. it was crazy how much I mean as Garoff just kind of stood there in the center and it seemed like every time Oliver wanted to score he could have is what I took from it right. I mean, he's definitely getting to the legs for sure. Right. So. Yeah. I the other thing is when we were hanging out with Chimizo, not to keep going back to how awesome it was, hanging out with a two time <laughs> world champ, but um, <laughs> while we were there, Oliver was texting him, um, saying he wants to train with him, mm-hmm. um, get together and and train together. So I don't know if that'll happen at Cornell or if that'll happen down at uh, Columbia or. Or somewhere in between, in between, but um, man, that'd be a good training partner for sure for those two. Yeah, especially now that you're in different weights, right? Because right. Oliver's is he going seventy? From what I understand, yeah. So I mean, why not? <clears throat> yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty cool to see those two wrestle against each other in practice, where you kind of maybe let it fly a little bit more with less consequences uh yeah <laughs> so. anything else right. what do you got i don't know i think we're i think we covered it unless you got something else uh no i mean we talked a little bit before but minnesota getting the news sean russell's transferring in um talked like he might be the 25 pounder next year since all those guys are moving up so it helps the minnesota line up a little bit kind of get another guy i mean he's a former all-american but you know, I think he, yeah, he's still got a little ways to go for sure. That's, I mean, that's a pretty big deal. You know, they, Minnesota kind of had a down year this year and all those guys move up a weight, you know, they're capable because all of them have placed. So, yeah, I mean, they, they got to be feeling pretty good about next year. We got Gable at heavyweight. Gable at heavyweight. Um, you know, I think we, Bart and I were kind of, talking about their lineup a little bit today, but you know, you're gonna have, you're gonna go Russell at twenty five, Lezak, McKee, Thorne, and then Blyze will go up to fifty seven. Jake Aller comes in uh at sixty five. Then uh, Crone's gonna drop down to seventy four. And then you go Webster, Stevenson, Stevenson and you know it's not a it's certainly not a lineup that matches Penn State or Iowa's by any means, but at least they should have a a respectable wrestler in there at about every weight, you know. There's no like absolutely terrible guy in the lineup, so that's well, that's, that's a positive. Yeah. Well, that's what makes it fun. Just I mean, just going to meets, you know. There's a couple of years in there where Iowa just had some holes, and it just like I mean, you only get ten matches, right? And if three of them are duds, it's like man, you know, because some of those other ones in where your guys's studs are, you know. There's not a good guy the other way or the other team, so right. Yeah, so I mean they should be an improved team next year. It'd be tough to be much worse. So I think <laughs> just with Gable alone, it's going to drive up the excitement for a lot of. Lot, hopefully, we can get some new fans. 
get some get a new crowd in there. I think you know it'll be interesting for me as far as being just a booster club president. What will happen here in the next two years? Because I wouldn't be shocked if you know with next year, not this coming year, but the year after, since we host nationals, I would imagine we're gonna have everybody coming out of the woodwork wants to join the club and get tickets through us. Hey, give me really good seats. Like what you've never been a member of a club for the last 10 years. And all of a sudden you want good seats. I was looking into that a couple, like a month ago. I, the, I was just kind of looking into the, I was way of doing it. You know, you and I's and Minnesota's yeah. and your guys is way more like clear cut and put yes. on paper of how to do it. It's, I had it's, to do that. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous how stupid some of the other schools make it where it's, there's so much gray area. Right. And that was and the biggest problem was we had a yeah. couple, a couple people complain and, we just needed to have a set criteria of here. If you hit these boxes, you get, yeah. you know, you get, this is how we see it. This is the way it works. I was almost thinking about doing it, even though I won't even ever make it up to Minnesota me, but it was just like, man, this is just so much easier. Join the club, pay your money. The sooner yeah. you pay your money, then the more likely you are to get better seats. <sighs> so there you go. That'll piss all the Iowa fans off. Yeah. You're now, and there's our title for the episode. Eric shares Minnesota Golden Gopher booster. I just hate stupidity. So, like, I mean, if you're being stupid, Iowa, you deserve it, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an Iowa fan, so. Right. Whatever. All right. All right, man. Anything else? We battled for a pretty long time. 50 minutes, yeah. Man, I, again, I have the, I have no good segues to end I this I think at the all. problem was your opening was just too good, and we we peaked early. I it took me way too long to think of those, and I could we could probably still spitball and add some in there. Yeah, I think we'll, <laughs> we'll fine tune it a little bit. Maybe that should be our opening. When we talk about Minnesota all the time. We don't have any Minnesota guys in the opening, so we have to we yeah. probably need to change something. Well, we could we could add something about how when Zach Stan, Sanders stomped on Anthony Robles' back at Nationals. Was there was there sound of? Of Robles like wincing or uh, you might get, you might get sound of the arena booing Zach. <laughs> That'd be a great inside joke. Oh, what is this yeah. random booing? That, that was the time when all eighteen thousand people booed Zach Sanders for stomping on the guy with one leg's back. Yeah, that's a pretty quick way to get on eighteen thousand people's bad side. <laughs> you thought they hated Meechit it or. Uh, um, what's his name for DeSanto, DeSanto for swinging at Meechich last year? That was way worse when <laughs> when Sanders went off, and rightfully so. You don't. I mean, it was bad. But. Yeah, yeah. That's funny though. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> All right. I don't even know what how to end this, but this was episode nine. Um, you know, keep. Listen to us every week. We've been doing a great job getting this every Monday night, getting it out every Tuesday. Um, we're getting a couple more ratings, so keep giving us five-star rating, like we said. If you don't give us a five-star, just leave. We don't need you. We don't care. Um, give us some reviews, and, yeah, keep listening. We really appreciate all the comments, and we haven't really got too much criticism. We know we probably will now, but – I'll take right. the criticism. There we go. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. This was episode nine of Shots Fired Podcast. See you guys.